Tom Anderson, and this is Webinar on Wednesday with Destinations Together. As always, a warm welcome to our Zoom listeners and cruise line executives that are tuning in. The pandemic and its COVID virus with no vaccine is proving to be a very challenging issue for the cruise industry overall. There are plenty of articles detailing the uphill battle and the setbacks that cruise lines are facing as they attempt to restart cruise operations. Meanwhile, the number of new COVID cases continues to increase with a record-breaking 4.85 million cases in the United States, and 18.4 million worldwide. Despite the challenges created by this COVID world, destinations around the globe are trying to get their economy open and support travel and tourism. Of course, reopening a destination or a cruise line is no easy task. Today's webinar features one country and one small cruise line that worked in collaboration to successfully rise to this challenge. Specifically, Sea Dream Yacht Club deployed its two-ship fleet to Norway, offering seven and 12-night cruises for Norwegians only, sailing toward two Norwegian ports. Together, they effectively created a Norwegian cruise bubble to keep their business operating and to generate tourism in Norway. Guess what? It works. Sea Dream is using a phrase we have not heard in months. The ships are fully booked and sold out. It's a remarkable achievement. Today's presentation is hosted by Destinations Together, which is an open platform of relevant information and collaborations to support the tourism industry. It is designed to help everyone connect, collaborate, and hopefully find solutions to bridge the gap until the cruise, ships, and tourism return to your region. I'll turn this over to Larry to share some important information and then introduce our speaker for today's Destinations Together webinar on Wednesday. Thanks, Tom. We want to thank you all for joining us today. Also, we want to recognize our guest speaker from Friday, June 29th, featuring Critical Steps to Reopen, The Six Seas by Barry Jacobson, a prior Disney executive. Check out our website for the recorded webinar and PDF presentation of Barry's Six Seas and all the others we have done over the last several months. Before we begin, let me remind you of a few housekeeping items. We are recording a webinar and we'll upload it to our website in the next several days. There's a Q&A tab below on your screen. We look forward in getting your questions that we can pose to Emilio for his feedback. We encourage you all to vote on questions listed in the Q&A to ensure we are able to provide the most relevant ones to Emilio. Please remember, we and our guests are only providing our opinions and possible sources for further intel. We are happy to have Emilio Freeman, Vice President of Itinerary Destinations, here to talk about Sea Dream, Yacht Club, and the Norwegian Cruise Bubble. These unusual times call for innovative, out-of-the-box solutions, and that is exactly what the executive team at Sea Dream are doing. They reimagined their cruise business and identified a unique niche market in Norway. This summer, they are operating their fleet of two ships by essentially, essentially creating a Norwegian cruise tourism bubble. Emilio, it's great to see you and have you join us today. And we, as well as the audience, are looking forward to hearing um, how you jump started cruising during these uncertain times. The virtual podium is yours. Take it away. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Larry. Uh, it's great to be here. It is, uh, I feel like uh, um, the swan. You look so great in the water as you're sailing across, but yet underwater, you're paddling really fast to, to, uh, to fight against the streams and the currents that you're, that you're being confronted with. Um, if we had talked two days ago, this presentation would have gone a little bit differently than it is today because it's real time and we're live and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I will, I will fill you in on our successes and our challenges right now. So what I thought I would do is, let me, let me see if I can share my screen in terms of, uh, of a presentation that we're doing. All right. so. Um, Larry and Tom, you describe it as a Norwegian cruise bubble. And in a lot of respects, that's right, that we are returning to cruising. But Sea Dream's a little bit different. We don't really talk of ourselves as a cruise line. We focus more on the yachting aspect, particularly because of our size. And 
um, I don't know everybody that might be on this call or this webinar, but what I'd like to do is just spend a few minutes before we get into the nuts and bolts of this year, um, describing what Sea Dream is all about and what makes us stand apart more with a yachting um, um, members than with cruise line members. So I say that we return to yachting. Our company, our company was founded by a guy by the name of Otley Brinstad. Otley has been in the cruise industry for probably 40, 45 years. He was uh, the founder of Seaborne Cruise Line. Seaborne back in the early 90s, mid 90s, uh, came out with a um, small ship luxury cruising concept. And it was, it was a huge success. He uh, was acquired eventually by the Carnival Corp group and, um, and was sitting on the board and eventually after a few years decided that he wanted to get back into cruising himself. He liked to get his hands dirty. So what he convinced Mickey Arison to do is uh, to sell him the smallest ships in the entire Carnival Corp um, inventory. And those two ships were originally Sea Goddess ships and they became what we call today Sea Dream. And those ships have been sailing and he introduced a new concept, small ship casual cruising, casual luxury. Um, and we've been in operation for almost 20 years. This September will mark uh, 20 years of operation. We actually started off at a very, very difficult time. If you think about, think back, um, um, actually next year, I should say next year is our 20th year. We started off in September of 2001 right during the uh, September 11th um, um, uh, tragedy. So um, Adley started the cruise line and we have two vessels and let me just give you some facts, some numbers on what we're all about. We are two small vessels about, of about 112 guests on board with 96 crew members. So com combined, we are less than 200. So that's a fraction of what you'll see on any major cruise line today. Today, when you think about the ships that are sailing and that have been built, you're looking at ships between 2,000 and 6,500 guests on board. Uh, with, with 112 guests on board a Sea Dream yacht and 96 crew, that's about a one-to-one -one ratio. And that ratio is very, very important because if you think about you know, mass market and other luxury brands, many of the other cruise lines that are out there, um, the, that ratio can be as much as three to one, three guests to every crew member. And in other luxury arenas, you might see something as low as 1.25, 1.5 to one, 1 1.5 guests to each crew member. We're small, we're 4,300 tons. Uh, we are shallow in that we only have a 4.3 meter draft. We, um, we ply the waters and are able to bring our vessels to destinations and places that our big brothers and sisters in the cruise industry aren't able to go to. So what's interesting, I didn't mention one of the, one of the key, um, key numbers is our beam. Our beam is 18.6 meters. And that gets us into places that you see here in this picture, uh, the Corinth Canal. Big cruise ships can't do this. Um, whenever we have a voyage that goes to the Greek Isles, we are able to sail through the Corinth Canal, and it is just a, a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience for guests on board. They love it. Um, they, they will stay up late at night or early in the morning, wake up early in the morning to be able to enjoy this experience. Um, we also have a marina on board, and our active lifestyle guests truly enjoy the toys that we have on board. We have jet skis, we have kayaks, we have uh, small sailboats, we have a floating trampoline, we have bikes that uh, we make available to our guests so that they can go off and, uh, and enjoy the, um, the destination that we're visiting. Likewise, I'll, I'll say that our deployment and our length of stay is many times a lot longer and a lot more flexible than our bigger brothers and sisters in the industry. Uh, we'll stay till midnight, we'll stay overnight so that guests don't have to feel like they're rushed and have to get back, back home. Um, we take our guests with our, our um, club director and go do hikes in many of these places. And I remember I was on board um, 
about a year ago in Amalfi and the club director said, Amelia, I got to join us. And I was busy working. It was, it was a working voyage for me, but I said, okay, I'll, I'll go with you. And he said, all you got to do is carry this backpack. So I put this backpack on and we were going, walking through Amalfi through the streets of Amalfi. I said, this is pretty casual. But as you go further and further to the back of the town, which is not that big, then you start coming into this area where there's steps and they lead up and up and up. And uh, this backpack started taking its toll on me. And by the time we got to the end destination, which was about three and a half, four hours later, we were at this beautiful scenic waterfall that had you tried to do this on your own, you wouldn't, have know, you wouldn't know where to go. But our club directors know all of the secret fun places of the places that we visit and, and things that will really excite our guests and make them feel very, very special. We, um, we offer yoga classes on board and, um, um, and in many of the places in the Caribbean especially, we offer this class on the beach during the morning. We, um, one of the signature things that we do in the West Indies or the Caribbean, depending upon where you're from, um, we have a caviar and uh, champagne splash where all of our guests are invited to come ashore into the water and have a great, great time eating the caviar, drinking the champagne and enjoying uh, a private experience, a private party where nobody else is around and our ship is in the background. Um, our ships are small, our yachts are small and they are custom made to do, to do private charters. And we have anywhere between 20 and I'm gonna say about 40 charters in a given year, whereby we customize the itinerary, we customize the onboard experience, whether it's for a wedding or a corporate sales meeting or a corporate event, um, we will design and work with you. The ship is basically yours for three, four, seven days, depending upon how long you want to charter for it. And on occasion, we've had some families that charter just for their own family and, and, a, and a few friends, and we'll design an itinerary, especially for them. It's, it's no special event per se, but they get, all, they get the exclusive use of our, of our vessel just to themselves. Um, it's all about yachting. It's not necessarily cruising. So it's a little bit different when you, when you think about the size of our vessels, the marina that we have, the toys that we have on board, and, and the, the, the fact that we try to have our guests spend as much time outside as they are inside. Inside, really, just, go, just use your stateroom to go to sleep and come out at, uh, during the day, the marina. We serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner outside on the after the ship. And I'll show you some pictures on that in a, in a few seconds here. But basically, when you're sitting outside, smelling the salt air and looking at out over the bow and, and the aft of the vessel uh, to the beautiful scenery around, it's just an experience that you can't necessarily get on a big ship when you're there with 2,000 to 6,000 of your best unknown friends. Um, so let's segue. Now we're getting into why Larry and Tom really asked me to come here and, and, uh, and fill you in on what's going on. Um, 2020, uh, 2020 is supposed to be a, a clear vision. Uh, this year has been far from that. Uh, we all know, all of us, anybody that's listening on this call or watching has probably experienced some degree, some mild, some very severe degrees of pain this year. Come about March 13th, it was announced by CLIA that uh, cruise lines, all CLIA members will voluntarily shut down um, and that would be effective March 14th. I remember that because March 14th just happens to be my birthday. Um, and we all knew that CLIA was saying it'll be one month, at least one month, but you and I know that we weren't sure how long this would really last. It, you know, today, just today, it was, today was announced by CLIA that this, uh, this voluntary um, stoppage will be until October 30th. So that's roughly about seven and a half months now that we've been, that we, that the industry will be out of service. And with this happening, you know, working for a cruise line and working in the cruise industry, we've always been trained to believe that we have floating assets and these floating assets 
if something goes bad, if there's a terrorism incident, if there's SARS or if there's swine flu or if there's a hurricane, we can easily reposition our vessels to another destination and move. Who would have thought that we would have a pandemic and that the entire world would be thrown upside down? And with us, yes, we had to really look at this and start thinking about what are we going to do? We had to really start thinking about um, our business, our product, and I, I think I can speak for many of us here that we had to start thinking about looking at our business from a totally different vantage point, looking at it from sideways and upside down. I mean, everything about our business today has changed. Uh, with us, we, we, um, we shut down in, uh, in March. We took our two vessels to Portugal and uh, we kept the crew on board in Portugal for, um, for um, starting in, in April. And during that time, we started looking at different opportunities. One of the things that, you know, really out of the box kind of thinking, uh, we were approached by a um, oil company with oil rigs down off the coast of South America and near uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And they were going through some of their own problems. They had oil rig workers that were on board uh, at a rig that needed to get off and other crew members that needed to get on. So they didn't have any way of getting them there because airlines were shutting down and airports were closing. Uh, so they approached us and we looked at that possibility. The numbers didn't work out for us, but we were open and receptive to all kinds of thinking. How could we continue operation? How could we keep our, our crew employed and our staff members employed in order to continue business? Uh, you see that many companies today, many cruise lines have had to furlough employees, have had to, um, to eliminate positions. There's been a lot of changes. We at Sea Dream as well, we've had to make a lot of adjustments. Um, and we've had people that we've had to let go. We've had people that we've had to furlough, um, but we're continuing on. And those of us, I, I count my blessings. I have a higher power that I believe in that is looking down upon us. And I am still employed. I am still working. I've still got a mission here to work with a Sea Dream and help make us successful. And all of this that I'm telling you is not just my own thinking. It's the entire company's thinking. There is a, um, a phrase in Norway that I will share with you that I learned um, uh, a few years ago, and it's called Edlag. Edlag basically means one team. We are one team, whether it's ship side, shore side, in the home office, uh, out in the field, we are one team. We work together on trying to make our company as successful as possible. So what, what we ended up doing, we kept both of our ships there. We also con uh, considered taking one of our vessels uh, from Lisbon, to Svalbard and sailing in, uh, in Svalbard doing kind of expeditionary type cruising. But uh, to be honest with you, the, um, the, uh, the hurdles that we would have to jump and get through in order to make that happen were pretty, pretty significant. The capital investment was pretty deep. Uh, so that idea was also abandoned. But the idea of Norway, our owner is Norwegian. Adli and Adli had um, took the bold move and said, okay, I'm taking one of our vessels and I'm gonna move it to, um, to Norway and sail along the Norwegian coast. And we were able to get an exemption uh, from the Norwegian government on the cabotage rules and restrictions. We were able to embark and disembark guests in two different Norwegian ports, open jaw on voyages, uh, as long as we touched upon a foreign port of call. And we did that and we created a, a website, a Norwegian website designed only for Norwegians, priced in a Norwegian kroner uh, with all the language in Norwegian. Come and enjoy a Norwegian holiday this summer with Sea Dream um, and with one of our vessels. And we uh, created this website and we launched it on, um, on May 25th. So in, in that period of time, when we launched it, we had roughly four weeks to get started and we created uh, two different types of voyages. We created a seven day and a 14 day voyage that one of our ships was gonna go on. But after one week, after one week of launching this idea and this product, so by, I'm gonna say by June 1st, we launched on May 25th. So by June 1st, 
we saw that the demand was tremendous and we for our one ship going to Norway so Otley, Otley Brinstad took the second bold move and decided to bring the second vessel to Norway so we took these 12 and seven day itineraries divided them up so that one vessel was doing 12 Sea Dream 1 and Sea Dream 2 was going to focus on the seven day itineraries seven days uh, between Oslo and Bergen, pretty much touching the southern part, the southeastern part of Norway. And uh, Sea Dream 1 going from Oslo up to Tromsø, just above the Arctic Circle, and uh, covering some, some beautiful, beautiful destinations. We'll show some pictures in a, in a, in a second. Um, but we launched this, and right around um, uh, the beginning of our first voyage, we had a problem that is a problem, a revenue management problem that many many cruise lines love to have. And in this environment, in what we were working with today, with all the uncertainty, with all of the sadness and the pain that everybody's going through, we had some voyages in July and in August that were oversold. Imagine that, to be in a situation where you're oversold. Um, we, we, we cracked open a bottle of champagne and uh, had a, uh, a virtual... Uh, happy hour one Friday night with all of the company, both shipside and shoreside people, and Atlee got on and, and thanked us all. But really, as I said before, at Lock, it, it was one team's effort. Um, so we did that and uh, we continued on. Our goal with these two vessels, we created 19 voyages, um, 10. 10, actually more than that, um, 12 seven-day voyages and a handful of 12-day uh, of voyages. Enough that would, we would only need 1,900 bodies to be able to be successful. 1,900, that's a fraction of any other cruise lines, one ship. That's our combined fleet for an entire season in Norway, 1,900 bodies. So, you know, you think about that, there are about 5.5 million people in Norway and all we needed was 1,900 of them to be, to be successful. Um, so going back, that mid-March uh, period of time when it got to be ugly and our launching on May 25th and our first voyage of June 20th, we've been in operation. We had roughly about four plus weeks to prepare and we've been in operation since June 20th. Um, I'm gonna cover the more recent current week's events at the very end, but let me just show you some of the things that we took our guests to do in Norway. Um, any of you that have been to Norway know how beautiful it is. There's about 15,000 miles of coastline and there are, Norwegians are a very adventuresome group. If when I think of Norway, I think of Vikings and they're going out to other lands and conquering other lands. That's true historically, but within their own country, there's many places that they haven't actually been to. So the itineraries that we designed, we went to some destinations that um, are just a speck on the map and very, very difficult for even Norwegians to get to. Um, but we believed that, you know, most of our audience, most of our Norwegian audience have been to places like Geranger and Flam, um, UNESCO World Heritage Site. So we did not include those in our itinerary. We looked to go to some other places. And as these pictures show, they are just beautiful, pristine, de a, a beautiful, pristine destinations all across all of Norway. And our ships were sitting there in the middle of these fjords, uh, almost to all of ourselves. And the water, the water was so clean it, it, and so crystal clear that you could see the reflections, beautiful reflections of these places. Now, I included this picture because if you focus in on the left side, there is this small little enclave that's there of, uh, of some buildings. And those buildings are a place, it's uh, in, in a fjord by the name of Hurunfjorden. And Hurunfjorden has this small little hotel, Hotel Union in Oye, and that hotel is designed and has only 23 rooms. Um, it's for the aristocracy of Scandinavia, kings and queens 
and very, very upscale exclusive individuals, the aristocracy know of this place and they come here. We were able to anchor off of this place in Hurun Fjordan and take our guests ashore and enjoy a meal at this hotel, do a walk around, do a little bit of a hike, take our water sports toys out and enjoy an afternoon in this place that very few people actually get to see. Uh, we took them via Zodiacs and uh, our activities ashore were basically, as, as you were saying, we're taking them ashore in Zodiac, so that's kind of a fun ride. Uh, we designed the itineraries in a way that we could have both vessels in port, in some of these ports at the same time. And that's a great photo opportunity because as both ships are sailing out, you can see, you can you know, be on one and take a picture of the other one and say, hey, I was on something just like that. Both vessels are identical. Only a couple of people that are really, really uh, uh, sea dream geeks, if you will, know the subtle differences between the two vessels. But uh, on paper and looking at them as a layman, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know the differences. So um, other places, we, we, as I say, we drop down the anchor and guests would go out on kayak rides in the fjords and in the waters just surrounding our vessel. Um, we'd take them for hikes. We'd go into town and we'd have an opportunity to, as I was telling you before, where our uh, club and activities director would take people out on hikes and visit the, the, the local scenery from a different perspective. Um, one of the most popular things we did, and, and I mentioned about Geranger and, um, and uh, Flam and the fjords there and some other glaciers that, that, uh, that we did not call on. We did visit some glaciers, but we didn't cover all of them because we knew that many of our audience had been there. So we offered the opportunity, if you really want to go, we'll work with a local helicopter company. And uh, for a price, you can rent the helicopter. And this has been one of our, our most successful YLAs, yachting land adventures. Um, one of our most successful YLAs that we've offered um, for guests that wanted to go for a helicopter ride over to see Geranger from the sky, over to see some other glaciers from the sky. We weren't able to land, uh, but we were able to get them to see other parts of Norway from a different perspective again. On board, on board experience, uh, they loved it. Um, you know, we tried to maintain a lot of the same programs that we that we run in our main destinations, being the West Indies and the, the Mediterranean. But this picture, this picture, you you if you look at it closely, you'll say this is not a Norway uh, picture. And you're right; it's because we've changed some of our uh, methods and, and procedures on board. One of them is when we welcome guests to come on board, is that we do not shake guests' hands. We will welcome them. Our crew that you see here, the captain, the hotel manager, our club and activities director, and uh, the other crew members there are standing very close together. In actuality, today, when this happens, they are standing a lot further apart, arm's length, and the captain and the team on board are not shaking hands. Um, they, they acknowledge and they welcome guests. There are no lines on board. So that part of the COVID procedures that, that we can talk about, um, we don't have to worry about that so much with only 112 guests. We never have lines on board a sea dream vessel. Um, but being Norway, uh, when you think about how, uh, and look at this picture, all these people on the aft of the vessel, uh, around the pool, nobody wearing masks. It's, uh, it's a tribute to Norway, I'll say, that with 5.5 million people, they've only had under nine, or right around 9,000 cases as of a day or so ago, 9,000 COVID cases. When you think about the United States and, and uh, what we have here, Norway has a fraction of the percentage of, of, um, of uh, cases that the U.S. has. So, they don't really practice um, the wearing of, of uh, masks and social distancing as much there, but on board our vessel with our team, we do adhere to it. We do adhere. We don't always wear masks. Our team doesn't always wear masks, but when I talk to you about shaking hands or you go in uh, to one of the restaurants, um, and this picture here is a perfect example. You see the buffet, but uh, the guests can come and look, but they're not able to self-serve. They may sit down and they will um, be served on 
the deck of the vessel with this beautiful scenery behind them and we will serve them what they ask for. And if they want salt and pepper, we don't even allow them to use the salt and pepper shaker because that would be passed around to other people. So instead, the, uh, the waiter will serve the salt and pepper for them um, so that we try to keep and adhere to admit as many of the guidelines as possible. This picture is uh, some other pictures from previous voyages. And I just wanted to share with you uh, another example, like in the gym. In the gym, um, in the past, you could just walk into the gym and enjoy time in the gym, but uh, on Sea Dream now, you have to set up a reservation and we will only allow a maximum of four people in the gym and you can be there. And once the gym is cleared out, we spend an hour disinfecting and cleaning the gym and, um, and then some, the next person, next group of people can go in. But again, a maximum of four. Uh, crew members, when they're there serving guests at the bar, they will be wearing gloves. Uh, we do still uh, offer the uh, movies under the stars and we still allow guests to sleep outdoor under the stars in our Balinese um, beds, which is a great experience. And in Norway, there's not a lot of lights. So when you're there sleeping out under the lights, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, our crew, this is a funny shot. They were all uh, Vikingized and, and got ready for, for, uh, for our start of these Norwegian voyages. So before we get into some other things, I just wanted to share with you a quick little video of, uh, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words, but uh, a movie is even better. So let me just play this for you and hopefully the sound comes through. Um, these are all shots done in the last six weeks of our two yachts in Norway and the excitement that we brought to our Norwegian guests there visiting, visiting places like Rosendal, Fjordland, Olden, Kalmar, Moloi, Bergen, of course, Oslo, Lorvik, three days in the Lofoten Islands, Trollfjord, and Tromsø. Just takes my breath away watching all of that. So COVID, I, I explained some of the things that we're doing and how we adhere to it. Um, our procedures include when guests arrive at our embarkation port, we have a couple of crew members that are sanitizing all of the luggage before it gets on board, especially the handles and the, the places that people obviously touch. Um, we have them fill out and present to us a uh, document from their doctor that says that they haven't been ill in the recent past. Um, we have a crew member that will uh, provide the hand, hand sanitizer. We do not let guests touch the hand sanitizer. We will pour it for them. And on board, we also have those automated machines where you just stick your hand underneath and, and the hand sanitizer gel will, will come out. Um, this has worked well for us. We've also, um, when we've done crew changeovers, we've had the crew that signs on, we don't allow them to come straight to the vessel. First of all, they, they have to be um, checked and approved to come that they haven't been sick at home and their temperature checked before they get on the airplane. They arrive and we will put them in a hotel, or we have been putting them in a hotel for 10 days. They'll be quarantined for 10 days and they will be tested on a regular basis to ensure that they are not sick before they come on board. So all of these are just some examples of how we've been able to, to uh, have uh, a COVID-free uh, COVID environment over the last six to seven weeks. But I will say that um, before we talk about what's next, I'll talk to you about this recent today and this week, um, we did a trail run with, um, with, with Tom and Larry yesterday. And after I finished that, I got a phone call um, that we do have one 
one guest who was tested positive. Uh, it was a, a Danish guest uh, that traveled with his father. The two of them were in a stateroom together for one week, actually 12 days. Uh, they got off, they flew home, and when they got home, they were tested at the uh, Copenhagen airport and the son tested positive, the father tested negative. Um, it was a big alarm for us. We immediately um, stormed into action. Phone calls were made. Um, the, the room stewardess that was, that was um, serving them in their stateroom was quarantined and put into her room. Uh, we told all the guests that they were not allowed to, um, to come out of their staterooms. We, we diverted the ship and today the, the vessel right now is in Bodo, Norway, or Buda, Norway. And uh, it's there. And earlier today, while we in the East Coast US were asleep, all of our crew members disembarked and they were tested. And um, uh, they got back on board. Then our, our guests are being tested as we speak. And by later on tonight, um, they, they will be, uh, the results of that will be made known. But I'm gonna to read to you right now a press release, a press release that went out just today. There was one yesterday that talked about the incident and the measures that we put in place, but I'm gonna to read to you um, what um, our owner has published and is um, made available to all guests on board. All crew on Sea Dream One have tested negative for COVID-19. This means that none of our crew have the COVID-19 infection. This of course is very good news and this shows that our comprehensive infection control measures that we started with already on March 15th have worked. However, this does not mean that you can guarantee yourself against COVID-19. It does show, however, how important it is to follow the national guidelines and to do as much as possible, even more so beyond that. Um, although there is no suspicion of COVID-19 in our guests, it is good that the local health authorities in Buda will also test all of our guests. This testing started at 1600 uh, um, Buda time, which is basically around 10 a.m. this morning, and the results we made available before midnight their time, or around 6 p.m., 7 p.m. tonight, our time here in the U.S. East Coast. We would like to praise the professionalism we have encountered at the National Institute of Public Health and their Norwegian Directorate of Health, as well as the Boda municipality led by Mayor Ida Marie Pinnerud. Uh, Nordland Hospital has done a fantastic job of testing all of our crew today and early, uh, early today and delivering all results already early this afternoon. They have shown what Norway can do in a situation like this. Our focus has been to do what we can to ensure that our guests have the best possible experience on board and we are proud to have a team on board that makes an extreme effort every day, especially in a situation like this. So if you needed more information on that, you can uh, write to press at seadream.com and uh, you, or just go to our website and you'll probably see some more information. But that's good. That is good news. And um, as it stands right now, our immediate plans are, are up in the air. We are looking at other options. Uh, we have canceled a voyage. That voyage um, that's underway, we, we are diverting the other vessel, which has no problems whatsoever. But Norway, as a result of other issues that happened with one of our, with one of our sister companies, not sister, but industry partners, um, has, uh, has resulted in Norway shutting all of its um, ports down. And so we are diverting our other vessel to Denmark. And we are gonna spend a couple of days in Denmark before returning to Oslo when all of those guests will disembark. And then after that, we're gonna return back to the environment that we were in before and we will be flexible. We will look at all kinds of options. Uh, nothing that I can really share with you at this time, but. We are open and uh, we are continuing on operation and our team will continue to do the best possible. Our original plan was to really return to the Med. We'd like to return to the Med. One of our vessels is uh, scheduled to go into dry dock after the Norway season ends in September. And the other vessel, Sea Dream 1, 
was scheduled to go back into the Mediterranean and spend a week there. These are just a sampling of some of the ports that we visit. We wouldn't be able to include all of them in, uh, in our itinerary. Like for example, we have Idra there and in the bottom in the middle and we're not planning on going to the Greek Isles in, uh, in, in those four weeks. After that, um, by December, we were looking to return our vessels and both of them be in operation in the Caribbean. And with, um, with CLIA and the CDC and everybody else extending until October 31st, we're hopeful that uh, come December, things will start to return to normal and that we will be able to operate in, back in the West Indies. So that said, our vessels, small, nimble, but we will continue to follow the sun and uh, deliver the best casual luxury experience on board for all of our guests at Sea Dream. So um, this last picture that I showed here, and I, I'll turn it over to questions with uh, Tom and Larry, but it's interesting. I, I mentioned 2,000 to 6,000 guests and that, that vessel is uh, an Oasis class vessel. And I had the opportunity to take my family on board of, um, a few years ago on board uh, the Oasis of the Seas. And uh, I was there, my kids and I, with 6,000, I think it was 6,600 other guests. And sitting right next to us in this particular picture is the Sea Dream 1. And that vessel carries 112 guests. So you can see how we are a little bit different than our big brothers and sisters. We, we, you might consider us kind of the beta test for the relaunching and the restarting of cruising. Uh, yes, we've hit a couple of bumps along the road. Yes, uh, it's, it's, there's a, still a lot of uncertainty, but um, we are nimble, we can adjust, and we are flexible, and we can do other things almost on the turn of a dime. Okay, so um, Larry and, uh, and Tom, I'll turn it back over to you, and if you've got any questions, um, I will stop sharing the screen. Fantastic. Amelia, thank you so, so much for the, for the presentation and, and uh, you know, to have the press release, you know, come out, you know, as you spoke it, I, I think that was, you know, that was fantastic. So uh, with that, let me turn it over to Tom. I know he's got a few questions that have come in. Um, so Tom, I'll let you take it away. Okay, thanks, Larry. And, and uh, Emilio, I, I just can't get over the, um, the, the views. They're just so stunning. Uh, in, in Norway, and it's just, it's just an amazing destination. Um, but I, I wanted to pick up real quick where you left off, and we were talking about the size of the ships, and you, you mentioned that, that um, you know, in, in Norway for the entire season on both ships, um, 1,900 passengers. You've been there for a couple months, and uh, it's, it's really been an awesome, awesome run. Do you, sort of pre-vaccine, um, how easy do you think it'll be to scale up to these larger ships? I know you've worked for some of these larger, larger companies before, but you know, it's just stunning when you look at, at the Sea Dream and then the Royal Caribbean ship, the, the, the difference in size is just uh, incredible. It's hard for me to really answer that because I, I'm not there and I can't speak for the industry. I can only speak for Sea Dream, but you know, it, it's, it's going to be, a lot of testing, and you, as I keep referring to, you got to keep nimble. Uh, you got to keep flexible. You know, you'll see, and I think it's already been announced that most likely the the industry, the big ships, will will do cruises to nowhere, will uh, sail to their private islands, maybe at fifty percent capacity, to uh, to really honor and and adhere to that social distancing aspect. It's uh, I pre-vaccine period, I can't really say uh, how they're going to fully fully address that. But regardless, you can have all the plans and perfect plans put together and launch. Uh, but granted, in, in today's new normal, that you've got to be flexible. You've got to be able to adapt. And you're going to have to probably do that on the spot, almost like what we're doing right now. Right. Just jumping over to the crew for a second, uh, you had indicated that uh, pretty much the crew are wearing masks. Um, how, how often do they uh, do they take? Do the crew have to have their temperature taken? Is that kind of a every day? Every, every day. Every day we 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 test their temperature every day. 
Now, we don't, we didn't require crew to wear masks all the time during these last six weeks, but I can tell you today, right now, as a result of, of uh, the vessel being in, in Buda, um, Sea Dream 1, the crew, the essential crew that's out and about that have to operate the vessel, um, that are serving the meals to the guests in their staterooms. Nobody is eating out in public. They're all quarantined to their staterooms right now. They are all wearing masks and they're all practicing social distancing. And um, the, the guests, if they choose, if they want, they can do that. But again, in Norway, the rules are a little bit different and they're a little more relaxed. Uh, they haven't had the same degree of problems that uh, many other countries have encountered. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, that's a, a tribute to them. Before this, um, uh, before yesterday, were the crew able to get off in the ports or did they just remain on board? Um, the, you know, we had to adhere to what the local communities would allow. Uh, it was spotty. It was almost like in the United States when you talk about uh, Coast Guard and, you know, it's almost like every port has its own sheriff and that sheriff has his own set of rules and they interpret the, the guidelines slightly differently. And Norway was a little bit like that. We go to some ports and we were told that crew can go ashore, um, uh, but some, some ports didn't allow that. And I think now they've shut everything down. But in a measure of precaution, we did not allow crew to go ashore, uh, just to go ashore and enjoy themselves. They were going ashore to accompany guests. They were going ashore on a task, or they were, you know, going, on, you know, accompanying them on the bike rides, on the hikes, that type of thing. Or if we were um, uh, provisioning the vessel in, in the ports that we do do that in, they will get off and uh, provision the vessel. Um, turnaround ports, they have to get off to, to, to be able to load the luggage on board. So those, um, those are more aberration and, and we were very cautious about who we would let off and on during, these, uh, during this time in Norway. Right, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And one, one other question I have here, and you know, when we talk about cavitage laws in the United States, you know, there's always this, um, I don't know, I think there's this dream that maybe Maybe we'll someday get them changed or get an exception because um, how difficult was it to get the exception there in, in, in Norway? Um, well, um, our owner, it's a small country and uh, he is, has a lot of friends and he's been in this business for over 40 years. And so he has his own set of connections. I, I, you know, I, I, we were able, all I can say is it was through him that we were able to get an exemption. Now, it's not, it's not Norway with all Norwegian ports. We had to have a foreign port in the voyage in order to make it happen. And you have to remember that there, Norway has a lot of strict rules. And uh, prior to this, uh, this incident and with, with the way that, that the CDC and everybody else was talking about, they're going with vessels that are carrying 250 people or more, right? Right. Um, and we are carrying less than or at right at the 200 mark. So we fall well below a lot of the radar that, uh, that many countries view as cruising. And that's why I continue to go back and say, we're more like yachting. And so through, through Atle, we were able to get an exemption that would allow us to sail open jaw with one foreign port. Um, and that was uh, Skyen, Denmark, which is at the, the very tip of Denmark. Right. Excellent. Um, I, other than thinking about the caviar and champagne, which just looked wonderful, uh, this has been just an incredible uh, presentation, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. I, I think you covered uh, all of the questions uh, that were received in, in the Q and A, and um, the one that's remaining there was was about the uh, the announcement today, which you which you already discussed as well. Larry. Cooper. I do want to comment on, a, on a, or tell you about a couple of comments. And one came from Charles and it says, nice to hear that Sea Dream was asked to come and help out with the oil rigs of Trinidad and Tobago. This was truly looking outside the box. And then another one from Sergio that said, great presentation. So uh, one from Ivan, Emilio, we are all looking at Sea Dream as our shiny light. Wish you, you. all the best, Ivan. I would just share one last thing with you guys that, um, you know, today as I, um, 
as I woke up and started going through my emails, I did have a number of emails, some from industry colleagues, one guy that uh, works for a, a major cruise line. He actually lives in Boulder. And he said, hey, listen, we're in this all together. If there's anything I can do, this is a competitor. Um, another, another competitor that's based in Oslo with another um, um, European cruise line said, listen, we've, we've had an incident on board our vessels earlier on this year, and we were, we're more than happy to help you in whatever way we can. So it's great to know that as an industry, you know, we're helping each other out the best that we can. Um, and the other emails uh, that I've received from other people wishing us well and what you've just shared, Larry, is uh, it, it, it touches my heart to know that, um, you know, we're going to get through this. It's, it's, yep. These are tough days right now, but we'll get through this. And have one more from Pearl that just came in that says, we are looking forward to welcoming Sea Dream back to St. Lucia. We're, we'll be there. So, <laughs> Thanks. Again, tons of thanks. You know, this was sure great. Thing. Appreciate it. So, um, we will not be having a webinar next week, but we will look forward to seeing you on Wednesday, August 19th, featuring idealization, brainstorming, get results. Learn about the creative, interactive brainstorming approach called idealization. Innovative catalyst Lee Kitchen will provide an overview of idealization, brainstorming techniques, and illustrate the process by showing every step taken during the session to resolve a business challenge, including a clearly defined result. Plus, we're gonna have probably three to four, maybe five special guest panelists on this. So please come join us. Please visit our website, www.destinationstogether.com to register for this webinar. As always, we will be sending out a reminder. And then if you follow us on social media, you can get the link there as well. Many thanks to everybody for joining us. Be strong, be safe and be healthy. And Amelia, again, thanks so, so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All the best. Uh, Amelia, th thank you very much. I think you summed it up with one word. And if I'm pronouncing it correct correctly, Edlog. One team. Edlog. E-T-T-L-A-G. Edlog. Edlog. We are yes. in this together, and we really appreciate today's presentation. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Destination together Won't you send me